you are now. Welcome back to the workshop. So today's episode is the next installment on the Cooper S Rockers. We might actually get these finished today, so that'd be a good call. Where we left off on the last video, we had built our rocker shaft. So we got this rocker shaft built and we had a good bit of uh, work to do. We remachined all the uh, rocker posts. We made sure that they were true and square in all the different directions. We trued up the different ends and we also modified it to move the uh, rocker post with the locking key from the outside to the second one in which is a modification that was done in the early days these being a true set of cooper s rockers were original with that one on the outside the next stage in the process is to rebush the rocker themselves now for the most part the rockers that have been supplied to me for this engine are actually in really good condition however when we used the snap gauges and the go-no gauge and measured these bushings, they were about two, they went between one and a half and two and a half thousands oversize. None of them were on size. Some were close enough. I mean, at a thousands oversize, you could actually reassemble them and be okay. I think the factory tons was a thousand and a half or even probably slightly more. But look, that's not how we roll here. We want to do it right. So we're gonna install new bushings. There's a couple of things we have to overcome in order to do this. One of those things is the supply of the, the bushings. So when we, and I'm taking these out of the package just to prove that this is literally how they come. When you buy these replacement bushings from the original manufacturer, and I think I probably have an OE one in this bag, because I keep it for setting up. The OE bushing that was supplied in the rocker from the factory actually has two oilways drilled into it. So there's two oil passages actually in the bushing itself. And those oil passages line up with oil passages in the rocker. We'll get you close up of those now. So that oil passage there is the one that feeds oil in a sort of a spray pattern up this way to oil the pad of the rocker and the tip of the valve and then there's another oil passageway which actually passes right through the back of the rocker into this treaded portion here where the rocker uh, adjustment stud screws through that would have been drilled originally from the factory blanked then the tread put in for the rocker post um, stud or sorry for the rocker stud and what happens is as the rocker shaft is going around we have oil pressure in this bushing a small amount of oil squirts out of the hole here in the rocker to lubricate the top of the valve and another small amount of oil makes its way up here and it actually kind of squeezes out in the clearances in the tread and drips down onto the push rod falls into the push rod cup and its job is to actually oil where the push rod is going to run on that ball joint there at the tip of the rocker when you buy these brand new bushings, they come unreamed, that's one of the things, and they, so they're actually the wrong size, which is perfectly fine, that's actually what we want, because we want to ream these in place after we press them in. But the second problem is, they come with no drillings in them. Now, you can overcome one of that, those drillings quite easily by getting a suitably sized drill bit, which can pass through that hole and you can literally just drill it in place. So you just poke that hole through and you do that obviously before you ream the bushing. So you put that in, you drill that hole, then you ream the bushing and then everything is in clearance and that hole's in the right spot. You cannot do that with the second hole, however, because how it was drilled originally was through the back of this uh, rocker, through the treaded portion here and all the way through into that. Once the factory finished they put i think it's a blob of weld is what they put on there i think they just put a little snot of weld on there and that actually blocks that hole up so theoretically you could actually you know grind that off and drill through there and drill through the bushing but it's quite a that would be quite an in-depth process because then you would have to re-weld the back of this and would you get a good weld now that it's been soaked in oil all those years etc 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 so i've come up with a solution for that i have a little kit built up here and i keep this in my toolbox for just this job made this a few years ago uh, to do this job and it has a couple of component parts 
The real keen eyed among you will notice that's actually a differential pin, is what that is. That's the pin out of a diff. Um, and it just so happens that the, the diff, a diff pin is actually the exact same diameter as an original or an OE uh, uh, rocker uh, post shaft. They're the exact same metal. So all I did uh, was built up a, a sort of a ring of weld around it and then in the lathe turned the OD of that and a shoulder. And what that actually allows me to do is I can use that as a drift to drive out the old bushing. It's just a very simple bit of tooling made up. The nice thing about an old diff pin is it's real hard steel, so it's ideal for drifting. You can hammer on it as much as you want and it'll come out. This other piece of round bar that you can see in my hand here, literally just a piece of 30 mil round bar. We put it in the lathe. We counterboard it so as that it takes the diameter of a bushing. So you can see a bushing sits into that counterboard perfectly. And then we also created a bore shoulder, which lines up perfectly with the bore shoulder of this, uh, or that shoulder there of your uh, rocker. So what that allows me to do is just to go over to the anvil, stand it up on it, and I can drive my pin out. Because I've got a significant counter bore inside there, that allows me just to drive the pin all the way through. And then I can even use that then to drive in the new bushing. So I can actually drive in the new bushing uh, nice and flat using my pin. There's one last bit of intricacy in this little piece of jig, and that is this hole here. What that hole allows me to do is with a 3.2 mil drill bit, which fits into that hole, what I can do is I can put a rocker post or a rocker uh, bushing, should I say not a rocker post, but a rocker bushing, inside into my jig, can hold it in there, and then I can use my drill bit to put that first hole in. Now, where does that hole need to be? Do I have to index it in there so it's in the right spot? Well, from the factory, they there's a split in all of these bushings. There's a split bushing. From the factory, they put that hole, well, as you would look at it, if it was the clock face you were looking at it, they put that hole at 11 o'clock. Sorry, 10 o'clock. Uh, so kind of sticking in here. So if you had 12 up there, you would 11 there, you would 10, and then you would 9. It was in there at 10 o'clock. Now, I do that just by eye when I'm doing this. Basically, what I do is I have a little mark just scribed into the uh, end of my, I uh, just put a little scratch in there, which gives me my 12 o'clock. And I literally just put the bushing in on that mark, hold it there tightly with my finger, and then just poke that hole through. Once the drill bit starts, you can take your finger away. It's not going to move around inside there. And just poke the hole through. And then that gives you your starting hole on your bushing. Once you have that start hole, there's one that I've just done uh, to show you. So now I have that start hole there at 10 o'clock. Once I have the bushing driven out, I can then line that start hole up. So basically the split of the uh, bushing is uppermost. That puts the hole in line with the hole coming through here. And then you can just push that uh, bushing into the rocker and then poke your second hole through with your second oil way. And what that will leave is it will leave your rocker back to factory original. A lot of people, I have, I've gotten loads of these to rebuild over the years that have had this, well, have been rebushed. And anytime I get them and they've been rebushed, it's this blank bush that's in there and there's no extra holes drilled in it. Uh, of course, the problem with that is that you're reducing the amount of oil that's going to get to the cups of the um, push rod and you're reducing the amount of oil that'll be up around the top of your valves. Obviously, if you reduce lubrication like that around there, you increase the chances of wear and you reduce the longevity of the valve train in the motor. It's very straightforward, it's very simple. So can you get away with not putting those hoods in? Of course you could, but you are gonna sacrifice longevity of the valve train. So if you're gonna do this, I recommend that you do it correctly. You get tooled up and you make it the way I did. What I just want to point out, folks, is, is that the tooling that I use is not really complex tooling. It's not stuff that is difficult to make. If you've got a friend with a center laid uh, and any kind of skill at all at turning, you can make this tooling up in a matter of minutes. It's, well, minutes is probably a bit 
of a stretch, but you can make this tooling up even for a one-off job, even if you're just doing your own aquifers. This is the kind of stuff you can make. And it's the difference going to be between you doing a really good job and you doing an amateur or, you know, poor job. What really will bother you is, is that you can send your rockers off to be rebuilt by a professional and they won't do this kind of work. And that is, I suppose, what you need to at least be able to check minimum. So do you want to follow me now? And we're going to make a couple of these. I'm going to do a couple of them and then I'll go off camera and finish them off. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the next assembly on the rocker post. We're just over here in the corner of the bridge port and I don't mind doing an operation like this in the bridge port. It's a bit easier to film for you guys and easier than trying to bend down the anvil. It's just to have something sturdy to bang against. So we're just on the table here. And all we're doing is just driving that bush out. So that's our driver, that's our uh, rocker, and then our bush just pops out. And it is just nice and repeatable. That centers the rocker perfectly. Nice and gentle tapping it out. No big force going on here at all. We're literally just taking our time, doing one at a time and getting through them. You guys will be figuring out now that this is why I create tooling all the time because if I have anything I need to repeat over and over and over, sure, I could do that operation that I just did there, like holding that rocker there in my four jaw chuck and I could drive out that, that piece, but I'm opening and closing the jaw of the chuck. Am I getting it gripped square? Am I getting it tight? Whereas with a real simple little bit of tooling like that, I can just be guaranteed, I can drive it out, I know that gets caught in there, everything works freely, and I can line my rockers up. I could go ahead and do absolutely loads and loads of those in an operation and get them done. Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to drill a couple of the new bushings, and then we will install a couple of the new bushings again in here, and then we'll be at the stage where we can rim them. So next job is to drill the hole in the bushing and I've done a few here but I'm just going to show you how I do it. So just have the bushing there in the end of my finger, lined it up with that notch that I showed you earlier on. Make sure the bushing is all the way into the uh, piece of tooling so I just literally press it in. Now I know it's in the tooling. I just use one of the V grooves here on the minimum machine to hold that round bar in a way that is easy for me. This, there's not a lot of pressure here. that swarf, one or two little taps down there, and out it comes, okay? We don't have to worry about deburring that because it's going to be reamed, and there's no burr on that side because we're machining it in a fixture. So, real dead straightforward and simple. You just get the bushing in there, make sure it's lined up with that groove. Sometimes when it goes in, it might turn a little bit. In fairness, how critical it is that that lines up with that groove it's not the end of the world, but you know, if you want a bit of repeatability, you want to be able to do the same thing over and over. So let our swarf off, give it a couple of taps. Now comes our bushing. So that is where I just keep those two together and I use them literally all of the time because they allow me to pretty much do anything I need to do with those rockers. It gives me the hole for the bushing, it allows me to drive in and out the bushing and it um, gives me, you know, repeatable accurate results. The next job to be done now is to drive in this new bushing. And you can do this one of a couple of different ways. One of those is you could use something like a fly press or a press brake, and that would be perfectly fine. You could also use something like a, um, a hydraulic press, that would work as well. Um, or you can just simply just tap the bushing in. Because these bushings have to be reamed in place, the main thing 
about reaming a bushing in place is that if you create any burrs I'm not actually hitting that bushing very hard, I'm just giving it a couple of taps. We want to just soak it in there flush. Check, make sure our oil hole lines up, which it does. And that's one done. So it's just a case of repeating that now seven more times. As I said, we could put them in the fly press, we could put them in the hydraulic press, we can tap them in. Uh, for me, I've just always had accurate, repeatable results from tapping them in, so I've never worried about it. It does deform the very tip of that bushing just slightly by, by hammering it in, but we're reaming it out anyway, so that's not a problem. That's going to be taken out of it by, the, by reaming it. So there's nothing to worry about. Make sure we're lining up where we are. Okay, that's us lined up with the hole. I'm just gonna repeat that now six more times and then I'll bring you over to the jig for reaming those out. So just before we go on to that final step, I'm actually just doing those holes. I remember I said it to you and uh, I forgot to actually mention the last one. So what I'm literally doing is I'm just drilling that hole, that second oil field ho feed hole and I'm just using a four jaw chuck here and I have a reducer chuck with the little micro bit in there which gives me the clearance to get in here and just drill it. I try and keep my finger kind of just around that chuck so that when it goes through I hold on to it. This is a very small drill bit, very easy to break it as Billy will attest to when I dropped the chuck a few minutes ago and snapped the top off it. So uh, you've got to take your time with it and uh, just poke the hole in one by one. I'm just gonna take this moment to thank everybody who uh, is subscribed to the channel and watches us. I've seen a few of the my Irish followers uh, Friday just gone at uh, Frank Sherrod Auto Test. So I'm sorry if I didn't recognize you or I didn't know your name, but thank you very much for coming over and saying hello and uh, telling me how much you like the channel. It was a lovely thing to see and to hear. So you're all very welcome. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, you are also most welcome. We're a uh, community of engineers, car enthusiasts, and blackguards, myself. Uh, have a look around, look at some of the videos that are on the channel, see what you think. If you like us and you think we deserve it, give us a uh, subscribe. If you think you have friends who also might like the channel or people you may know that would like the channel, uh, share it with them let them know where we are who we are if you have a facebook page share us on that instagram share us on that uh, it all helps and we appreciate all of it um, comments in the comment section below don't be afraid to comment if you think that uh, i'm making an absolute hames or something i always love uh, uh, hearing your ideas and hearing your your thoughts and we can have some worthwhile discussions as we go along and figure out how to do things better and right, and clear of confusion. Okay, now that we have all those drilled, first thing we'll do is take that little microscopic drill bit out of there so that I don't drop it and break it yet again. Put that up there. Okay, so every one of those has now had its hole drilled in here and it has its hole drilled into this bushing to line up with the oil way. The very next process we need to do is we need to come over here uh, to our jig that we've set up. Now, before we can do this, what I actually need is a finished rocker to set this jig up. We'll go grab one now. So this is one that I keep spare uh, for setup purposes. So the way this works is actually really very straightforward. What my jig is, is a block of aluminium that I have set up in my vice here, uh, in the machine vice. 
I have a stud that's drilled at an exact right angle. Now it is very important that that stud is in there at an exact right angle. Otherwise, uh, you won't ream this bushing through. What else have we got? We have a hole that goes through the block and we have another locking stud here and its job is to centralize everything. Now, I won't lie to you, there is always a bit of a faff in this. There's nothing, uh, it's not dead uh, quick, unlike some of the other processes, but reaming this bush and accurately and square is really important. So I actually don't mind taking my time and doing it. So this is the initial setup one. So we lock that guy in there and we lock that nut there. And what that's doing is it's holding our rocker down flat to this surface here with this one. And this one is holding our rocker in tight to that so it can't turn. So our rocker now is in our little fixture in our jig. And the next thing we need to do is we need to square it up with the milling cutter. So in the milling machine here, I have my R32 collet holder and I have a 14.30 ream. Now bear in mind, this is a setup rocker. It is already reamed, it's already true and square. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use it to allow us to chew this all up. So we'll bring this one in. We'll bring our ream down and start to get a feel for that ream in that hole. And we're very close there now. What I'm gonna do, so I'm just gonna slacken the vise ever so slightly. And what that's going to allow is that aluminium block to have a bit of wiggle room, which is what we want. Push the ream right through that hole there. Then tighten up that block. And that's it. Now our ream is literally running free as bored up and down through there. I'm able to turn that by hand. As I said, that one was reamed already. So we'll tighten up our fixture and we will lock our table. Lock down our cross slide. Okay, and that ream is now sitting in there true. This is where the faff comes. So to ream each one of these, I have to take this little bolt out Of course, the very first one's already given us hassle. Take that little belt out. Okay. Then, slacken off that locking nut there. Take that guy out. And we'll put our first new one in there. So hold that guy there. That bolt in, this lock color. Now, if I was going to do hundreds and hundreds of these, I'd come up with something slightly more efficient. <laughs> but I don't do hundreds of these. Do eight at a time, maybe 16. Don't build Cooper S rockers every day of the week. So, this technique for the amount I use it works perfect. Give that a little nip there. Just before I go home off that, I bring that one in. Winds us up there. Get that another little nip. Let's spin there. Okay.
So the machine is auto feeding down. So it's actually feeding down through that spindle. It has gone through now. It's gone down through the hole. It's making clearance. And the next thing that will happen here is you'll see it kick out and then we'll be ready to set up for the next one. That's it kicked out. And our bushing is now reamed to size. And now it's just a case of re repeating that process six more times. And we will have a bunch of reamed rockers. I'll do that six more times and then I'll meet you back over at the bench and we can start putting this together. So now, we are back over at our bench. We have all of our bushings reamed. We have all of the holes drilled. And what I did was I took all the adjusters out obviously and gave them a good clean up. And we've brand new adjuster nuts to go on them. The old rockers had a kind of an unusual lock nut kind of si system, but that's actually the, the proper adjuster to go on it. So each one of them then can go on. There's obviously spacers have to go on here but we're not gonna be able to set those up until we have the actual cylinder heads. And the cylinder heads are due back any day now from getting their valve seats cut. So as soon as they're back in the shop, uh, we're gonna be reassembling those. And one of the very last parts of that video will be us putting these rockers with their, uh, you know, correct spacers onto that uh, cylinder head and then setting the spacing. So we'll have some spacers to set on those rockers and we will do that, as I said, as soon as we have the cylinder heads here. I hope you guys enjoyed following me along for this uh, rebuild of these rockers. Let me know in the comment section below, would you like me to see me rebuilding other rockers, uh, modifying them, doing that kind of thing. As I said, these are just a dead standard rebuild of rockers uh, as I do them here in the shop. Am I saying that that's the only way to do them? No. Loads of people have loads of different ways of doing them, but that's what I've developed for myself over the years, and it has worked well. I've always ended up getting really good results. I've got rockers now to fit on these new shafts, absolutely mint. I love the clearance, is absolutely perfect. If anyone's wondering what that ream size is, it's 14.3 millimeters. That's the correct ream size for rockers. Uh, one last thing before I leave you, if anybody is wondering, or want to understand how they know uh, whether they need to replace this rocker stud or not, this uh, rocker adjuster stud or not. Basically, there's a very simple uh, way of testing this. With a brand new rocker nut, if this stud is damaged, it'll be stretched. And if it's stretched, the tread pitch won't be even across the stud. So if you want to figure out whether your rocker stud is good or bad, you run a nut all the way down that rocker adjustment stud and if it runs down it free and easy without any requirement for a tightening up or binding, then that is gonna tell you that that rocker stud is not stretched, it's not uh, worn. The only other place that it could wear that could be a problem is on this ball. So you just check that ball to make sure it's even and consistent all the way around. It's not worn to one side or worn down to one side. And if it is even and consistent all the way down, then that tells you that you have a good rocker stud that is serviceable, ready to reuse and put back in the rocker, which is what we've done here. Nothing wrong with them at all. No point in replacing them. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. See you on the next one.